There's just, you know, there's just something about a blowout and a curl and an uh, eye situation. A hundred percent and a smoky eye that I see there. It's fabulous. Thank you. And then of course I did my like Love it. matching, matching, matching. Amazing. That's next. Let me see your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> So I am ironically not wearing a NYX bra. Don't make a pumping bra. I know. Oh, oh, you guys don't make a pumping bra? Not yet, but I, I've been um, exclusively pumping. So uh, it's something that we have to get on for sure. Um, so I think we lost Ashley. Let me just see if I can get her to come back one second. As I tell you all about this bra that I'm wearing that I cut holes into so I can uh, fit the pumping parts. Who kicks um, me off? Oh, I don't know. I didn't mean to kick you off. Are you back? Oh, yeah, I'm back. It doesn't matter. Perfect. No, but you know, I have a whole box of maternity bras and I cannot wait to wear them. I mean, we I'm, I'm so excited. We make great, um, we make great nursing bras. For sure we do. That's what I, yeah, nursing. Matern I said maternity, I meant nursing. You know, when you're in your third trimester, nothing makes sense that comes out of your mouth. Well, I'm so excited that you're here today. Um, it's it's great for everyone that's joining us. Hi from Germany. Looks like we have people from all over. Um, I know. This is fun. Yeah. So I'm Joanna. I'm the founder and CEO of the one and only Ashley Graham here, and we are here to talk all things life after birth um, as it pertains to this beautiful book that um, we created with Carriage House Birth, and Ashley so kindly wrote the introduction for and. Um, this is one of the ways that we first got connected, actually, like, yes, through this book. Well, I think that, um, we definitely got connected because you were like, Hey, I've got really great postpartum clothes. I need you to try. And I tried them and I was like, yep, I'm a fan. Send them all, <laughs> send them all. And, um, but the catalyst bra had already had, and oh, that's what I have on right now. That's what you have on. Yep. Yeah. That's my favorite bra for working out. And I mean, pregnant or not pregnant, it's the best sports bra. Um, um, but anyways, this book was so much fun to do. And I, I haven't read every story, but I, but I have to say like the stories that I have read just make me so emotional because I mean, I'm having a couple of kids at the end of this year and it's like, you, you forget what happened your first time around. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, but now I'm remembering stuff. <laughs> so how are you feeling? So for those of for those of you who don't know, Ashley is expecting twins later this year. <gasps> Jonathan Van Meter's on. Hi, Jonathan. Sorry, he's one of my friends. <laughs> no, it's great. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> um, so how are you feeling in general, I guess, as we, we talk about, you know, your living your life after birth and gearing up for your, your next birth, which is Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I'm, I just follow and do whatever Joanna does. She had one kid and then she had twins. So that's what I'm doing. I had one kid and I'm having twins. <laughs> you need a twin special edition. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, honestly, I have been feeling so good. I've had loads of energy. I've been doing yoga and working out. Like I work out two to three times a week, like a hard, like kind of like a hit. I wouldn't say hit because I'm not doing any burpees or anything, but like, you know, we go hard and then I do yoga three times a week also. And, um, I think that's helping me stay mobile and like my ankles aren't swelling, yeah. but you know, I, there's a lot of pressure down under and I'm just like, I'm wearing the belly band and I'm wearing compression panties. Cause it feels like everything's going to fall out. I know that feeling very well. <laughs> You, I think you did a Instagram stories about it last week, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, I feel for her." Because I know that feeling of like walking to the store and being <laughs> that gonna fall out. I was just bending over to pick up the Life After Birth book, actually off of my bookshelf, and I said, "Oh, can't stay down here too long." Can't, and I went and got my ice pack. Got to sit on that ice pack. Uh, I know someone's saying I'm 32 weeks pregnant and that they feel less. Uh, well, I'm glad because I had totally forgotten, but I'm glad that someone reminded you of the exercise ball because that takes a lot of the pressure off, which is a really good tip. 
Yeah, the exercise ball. I mean, and I think that just being on all fours is helpful too, right? Because it's like the blood flow and everything. But I mean, it is different. Twins are different. I, they they haven't been different until this third trimester. Uh, and you you did warn me. You said you're going to need to make a lot of space. And you also said like, yeah, but your body went back really quick. Like you gave me hope, Joanna. <laughs> I was like, let me see your stomach. Pull your panties down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sure, I'll show anyone else. We're like in the middle of glam. And I'm like, at this photo shoot, I'm like, let me see your stomach. The, the human body is a really incredible thing. Like, it's, it's amazing to see the transformation that happens, you know, both as you prepare to have a baby and then during birth and then back as well. It's, it's really something else. It really is. Thank you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. That's why this book is so cool because I think that if this book was there before I gave birth to Isaac, it would have given me even more calmness and peace. Like, because you don't know what's going to happen after you pop a kid out. Um, you you don't know what you know what you could go through, not go through, and people think they're doing you a favor by not telling you everything because they don't want you to get afraid, like be afraid or something. But I feel like. There's something in being like over prepared and not being bad, but then like also kind of being under prepared isn't good either. I agree. There's got to be a balance somewhere, but I I do find that too. Some people don't want to tell you things because they're they're scared it's going to freak you out or something. But then you end up discovering it on your own. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you in your postpartum experience with Isaac, what was what was the biggest surprise for you? Like, what was one thing where you're like, wow, I did not expect it to be like this. I really didn't understand the adult diaper situation. I just mm. didn't. I, I knew that I was going to be bleeding down there. I knew that I was going to have to wear like a, you know, like a big old pad, but I didn't know that it was like, I was going to be wearing diapers for, I was wearing them for four weeks and, and like the blood clots and the, okay. you know, the first poop, the first pee, the first pee. I feel like those things are scarier than giving birth. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I remember my first poop. Honestly, I was sitting on the toilet and I just started praying out loud. I was like, dear Jesus, give me the strength to push this out. Dear Jesus, please don't let this rip everything else out. And it was like, and it, it was actually fine. I just got a care package from someone and they sent stool softener. And I was like, see, these are things that my mother would have never thought about when she was giving birth to me to take a stool softener. It's true. I feel like the landscape has come so far. They have all these. Um, I'm sorry, I'm talking so much about poop, but no, you know, that, I, was, that was my shock to the system. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That was that was that was shocking. Um, what was yours? I even though people told me because we were making nursing bras or maternity bras, and we'd done a bunch of focus groups, and everyone had told me how challenging breastfeeding can be. Mm. I did not appreciate or understand it. Like it was meant to be one of the hardest things that I've, I've, I've ever gone through. And that yeah. was a big surprise, especially being, I don't know how you feel, but like I'm a bustier person. And so I always just equated that as it would be like natural or right. easy. It, was, it was pretty tough. Um, so that was a pretty big shocker for me. Yeah. And when milk comes in, oh my dear so Lord. Painful. Like, so painful. I have photos on my phone. I'll send it to you afterwards, actually. That like I can't wait. What? <laughs> I can't wait. I love this stuff. Like a little, a little. <laughs> <laughs> shocking. So that was a big one. Um, and Did I your nipples bleed? My nipples oh. got cracky just the first week. Actually, did they? They still do. Like even today. Even oh. after. Still do. Yeah. It's it's uh it's 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 a lot. That one. You know. Oh. How much longer are you going to breastfeed the twins? I think I'm almost done my pumping journey. So I, I exclusively pumped this go around. I'm at mm -hmm. months, seven and a half months. And I, I think it's coming to an end. You may, like you did seven and a half months with two kids at the same time. Holy sh are, um, Yeah. So, and are you, I mean, you did a home birth with Isaac. Like, I did. I did. Um, Tell us about the decision to do that, if you don't mind. Like, for no, about home births or you know, our everybody's everybody's throwing you nipple creams and stuff out. I'm sure you've tried everything. 
<laughs> I'm always open to more suggestions though. Right yeah. now, I'm if you guys have brands of nipple creams you guys love and that is natural for when the baby's mouth gets on it, send them through. Um, you know, okay, so my, so I did, I did give a great synopsis in the book about yeah. my experience with Isaac. I hope you guys get the book. It's a really great, it's a coffee table book too. Um, the pictures are phenomenal on the inside. I mean, look, how sweet is that? Oh, oh. that I never mastered. Carrying them and feeding at the same time. Oh, I, got, I got to figure that out. Um, so I decided at 33 and a half weeks to change my whole birth plan. And that is like a huge no, no, especially like, a, uh, in New York city, like doctors, like won't even take you. And it was because my doctor at the time was already talking to me about getting a C-section or inducing me with Pitocin and telling me that I needed an epidural. And I had ex explicitly told him, I don't want an epidural. I don't want you to induce me. If I go over a week or two, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I think he had a vacation planned mm -hmm. and he needed to get to his vacation during my due date. So that was the issue. And I figured all these things out at the same time. And I was like, I can't use this doctor. So because I was so late in the game, um, I actually started visiting birth centers in New York City. And the really sad thing about the birth centers in New York City are there's like one or two. And the there's one that's kind of close to my house and the kind of close to my house is like 45 minutes away. And it is, it, it, it just was it felt like when I walked in that I would have been more comfortable at home. Yeah. So I made the decision to do it at home, but then I had to find the right midwives and what midwife is going to take me at 34 weeks. And I found these amazing women that are called um, mid uh, midwifery. Uh, si I don't know. Their names are Kim and Kat and they're amazing. Kim Sun and Katerin Nunez. And they are these phenomenal women who I'm now doing um, the 12. And um, I'm just, Oh, wow. I'm so excited because it was such a phenomenal experience. Like I didn't have strangers looking at me. Nurses weren't coming in and out of my apartment. Like we had the lights down, cool, chill music. Justin made a lamb stew while I was screaming bloody murder. Um, the pain, the pain, the pain is very great. Oh. I mean, everybody talks about how bad it hurts, but it hurts. Oh. Um, but it was worth it. Cause like immediately when Isaac came out, so I was in a pool, I ended up pushing him out in like a, this big pool that we blew up. Um, and it was my midwife, my doula and Justin and I were all in the pool and I was kind of like leaning back, like pushing and it, like I could feel his head coming out. Oh. And did you feel your baby's heads coming out? I did. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't um, have drugs either with, or like, you know, an epidural yeah. or anything. I felt it. Yeah, I felt, I felt it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's really cool to feel their hair because all of a sudden you're like, oh, it gives you this like ammunition to like keep going. So I, uh, I was like, great. So literally like I was pushing and then my midwife said, stand up. And she, uh, she, she kind of coaxed Isaac's head out a little bit. Like she like did some rrr, 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 rrr. and then I, I, I stood up. And so I was standing when I pushed him out all the way in, in the pool. But I remember sitting there with him on my chest and it was so beautiful. Justin and I were there, we were in this pool of blood and vernix. And, and I looked at my midwife and I was crying, thanking them that I could do this at home. It was such a beautiful experience. And then I said, I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> and they started laughing because I was like clawing the walls. I was like, help me. That's how bad it hurt. And then immediately after you're like, let's go again. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because everybody talks about how like quickly you forget it. And like for me, it was like instant. <laughs> So, so, so cool. And was there ever a moment that, like afterwards, I guess it must have been so intimate, right? Just you and your family at home. What was that like? Yes. The aftercare was, so Justin and I, we really, like, we, we thought we needed a ton of help. And I think that 
having the jobs that we have, like we were able to actually take off and we, we didn't leave the house for two weeks. Oh. It was amazing. Um, we had midwives coming in to check on me and baby and, um, and it was, it was just like these serene, there are these like surreal two weeks that I had begged my mother, please come help me before I had Isaac. You're going to have to be there. You have to set everything up for me. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never changed a diaper before in my life. And she's like, Ashley, you are going to want a couple of weeks alone with your husband and your baby. And I'm so glad that was like some of the best advice that she gave me because those were two weeks that Justin and I still go back and we say like how we treasure, like just having that time. And then you know, and then real life starts kicking in and you, you know, we start to get into a schedule or whatever. And you start to like, my mom came in and would like, you know, take the baby for a couple hours while I could like go to the gym or whatever. Um, but the, the diaper was a big deal. And then I had to come up with a system next to my, my toilet where I was like, okay, this is what's going to wash me. This is the diaper. Then I had like pads in the freezer with lots of witch hazel on them. And I would put that in my pad. Like that system felt like it was harder than changing a poopy diaper, taking care of myself alone. Yeah, for sure. Well, while taking care of it, of a baby, right? Like the two yes. Yes. It. Yeah, tandem. I can't imagine now I'm gonna have to do me and two babies. Uh, uh -huh. It's different for sure. And like, how has, you know, cause you've always been such a huge, just advocate of really leading the charge around body positivity and all those different things. Like how has your relationship with your body changed after your <laughs> birth experience and like, do you know what I mean? Has it changed? Is it the same? So we talk about that identity a lot in the book as well. Yeah. I think it's like, I feel like to say that your, your identity around your body after birth, like it, it like it has to change. Uh -huh. Like you just, you've created life. You've pushed life out of you, whether it's a C-section or vaginal and now you're having to take care of that life. And you kind of, for me, my experience, like I just didn't care anymore about my body. Like it wasn't about like the external, it was more about like the nutritional, like what am I putting in it? Cause then I started breastfeeding right away. And it was, it was less about like, it was more like functionality. Like my body was now like a functioning aspect of my life that I needed to take care of for my baby. Oh. Um, I never lost the baby weight. I kept 25 pounds on and I got pregnant again right away, obviously. <laughs> um, well, I guess not right away. There's women who get pregnant way quicker than I did. I know so many, it's like, wow, bow down. You guys are awesome. Um, but, you know, there, there has always been this tug and pull of like, of acceptance, right? And it's a daily conversation with yourself. And I think that when I got pregnant is when I had to really amp up my affirmations and the conversations with myself because my body was changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I started really feeling myself in my pregnancy, my first pregnancy until the third trimester. Cause I just didn't, I didn't like how my body was just rapidly turning into something that I had no control over. Mm -hmm. Um, and then afterwards, I think that I had Isaac in January and then we all had to go into lockdown in March. So it was, it was like, I wasn't, my body wasn't a priority as far as like, I didn't have to be in a swimsuit in a couple of weeks. I didn't have to, you know, get down because I had a lingerie shoot in, in two months, you know, like those, those things weren't a priority. Um, because my job had just like done a big shift like everybody else's. Yeah. So um, I knew what to expect in this pregnancy. And I've definitely had my like moments where I'm like, oh my God, I have so many stretch marks with this kit, with these mm -hmm. kids. And I'm like rubbing my stretch marks. And it was so funny. My mom actually, the other day I was like putting like all these oils and lotions on my, on my stomach. And I was like, mom, look. I was like showing her and she's like, it doesn't matter, Ashley, like just be happy that you have a healthy body and healthy babies. She goes, they turn into iridescent tiger stripes afterwards. It's cool. And I was like, okay. 
Um, and she's 57 and she showed me her iridescent tiger stripes and they were like barely there and she doesn't care. So it's like, you know, you, you get a little smack in the face from your mom every once in a while, or at least I do. <laughs> Puts it into perspective. <laughs> up a little bit of grace. Thanks to those like, our, you know, like parents that have gone through before, which I think is so important. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we women, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We, we really do. do. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's something also we talk a lot about publicly is all of the pressure to like be perfect at everything, like be perfect at breastfeeding, be perfect at parenting, be perfect at the diaper changing, like this pressure to kind of enjoy every single moment, even when it's hard. Mm. Um, so like what advice do you have for people that are maybe experiencing some of those those low points that can happen? post-birth do you know what I mean where you're maybe feeling a bit down or questioning yourself um do you have any like words of wisdom for that 100 percent. I actually was on TikTok the other day and I saw this mom crying and she was saying I wanted to do Montessori with my kid I wanted to have my house cleaned I wanted to like not give them you know snacks all day and I was like girl we are all going through the same thing like there isn't one day and especially if you spend alone time with your with your babies like more like I had to spend I not had to but I spent three days alone with Isaac without any help no my husband's out of town my mom was out of town and I was like single mothers single mothers oh my or single parents even like I know some dads that are doing it by themselves too like it is it is a lot of pressure and there is so much that we put on ourselves but there's no such thing as perfection I I've been stri I've been saying that from the top of my lungs about my own body you know since um, since people were, could listen, but it's the same thing with, with being a parent. Like there is no such thing as perfection. There is just this whole community of, of parents who are just trying to do their best. And I think the best thing that I did was I made other parent friends and I asked them, you know, I mean, I've asked you like every question under the sun. <laughs> But I think like that's the important thing is like you have to shamelessly like put yourself out there and ask for help. Like I have not been afraid to ask for help. I've not been afraid to ask for information. I've bought every book I could. And I think that that, you know, is something that you could do for yourself. But also like giving, like you said, give yourself grace because all these like images of these like quote perfect looking people on Instagram when they like have their baby and how they're doing even if they're wearing a diaper and their hair is curled I'm like that is not a reality that I have ever lived in my life the only reason I look like this today is because I called Danielle and Katie and I said I need help and I only have one child today in a couple months I'm gonna have three I don't know when this is happening again so um give yourself grace I think that's great that's really great advice for everyone to keep in mind um, well, there's so many more great insights. And like Ashley said, she shared a lot more about um, her home birth with the book. And there's so many incredible stories in here that, to your point, Ashley, like you can't really read them in one go. You just kind yeah. of read a couple, maybe laugh. Oh, I just opened up mine. Oh, yeah. That, that picture where I'm like in my midwife space. And I'm like, this I is probably where I was screaming, help me. For sure, it's such a powerful image. Um, and thanks for you know sharing something that's so deeply personal and and, and you know um, intimate with us and and with everyone in this book. I think it really goes a long way for people to hear these stories and understand that you're you know you're like Ashley Graham, the supermodel, but you're just <laughs> at this point in this photo a badass human, you know delivering a baby in their home <laughs> oh joanna okay was your second was your second birth was it half the time as your first um i got induced at 36 weeks so it was a little bit different okay but what i can tell you is that both of my a twin pregnancy both of my girls were born within 10 minutes of, like like total Ooh. babies so it happens fast. Okay, that's what I'm kind of hoping for too. Because everybody's saying like, well, not everybody. Every pregnancy is different. Every delivery is different. But like your second one, like it's half the time of your first or something. I don't know. 
I think it can go, I think it can be a lot faster. So keep that in mind. Like, you know, keep, keep, keep the pool full. Chris <laughs> <laughs> too. tell Justin, maybe he can make like a, a pizza pocket or something. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so good to see you. So great to see you too. Yeah. Thanks again. And thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, and we have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.